report will now come to order in compliance with the Open Meeting Act. A copy of this act is posted in this meeting room. Madam Clerk, would you please take roll? Bulkley? Here. Allercone? Here. Barr? Here. Freshour? Here. Hemer? Here. Jablonski? Here. Lopez? Here. Roth? Here. Schilling? Here. Mayor Bulkley, the roll has been called. Thank you. Council President. Our Father, thank you for the opportunity to serve our fellow citizens. Please give us your wisdom and guidance to make the proper decisions entrusted to this governmental body. May our conduct show respect, honor, and courtesy to each other, as well as to all our citizens. Amen. 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 about done. Am I on? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hello? No. Everybody but you two. What's that done? I don't have it either. Okay, can you hear me now? All right, we'll try to fix it. Please keep working on it. Anyone who would like to address the uh, council, we'd ask that you please come forward, give your name, your address. And we'd ask that you keep any of the agenda items you want to address to five minutes or less. We do have a full house this evening. We have a few items on the agenda that will probably bring in some discussion. We ask that everybody please keep it cool and keep the comments to five minutes or less. All right? Consent agenda. The items following, or the items on the consent agenda, will be are routine in nature and will be um, enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a city council member or citizen requests. In which event, the item will be removed from consent status and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Item 4A: Minutes of the April 1st, 2024 City Council meeting. <laughs> Item 4B, minutes of the April 1st, 2024 Community Development Agency meeting. 
Item 4C, minutes of the April 3rd, 2024 Civil Service Commission meeting, certifying firefighter candidates Cruz Bohr, Samuel Hilger, and Noah Lindbergh. Item 4D, renewal of solid waste hauling licenses for the following, Ace Sanitation Service Incorporated, Beamer Lumber LLC doing business as Discount Dumpster, Hilltop Roll-Off LLC doing business as Callaway Roll-Off, S2 Roll-Offs Refuse and Recycling, UNI Sanitation LLC and Waste Connections of Nebraska Incorporated contingent on bond requirements being met. Item 4E, resolution number R24-40, approving the permanent utility easement agreement with Loop River Public Power District at US Highway 81 substation. Item 4F, reappointment of Steve Anderson to the Board of Adjustment for a three-year term. Item 4G, finance department reports. Item 4H, payroll and bills on file. Mr. Mayor and council members, is there anything you would like removed from consent status? The items on the consent agenda to be approved as presented. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. <laughs> motion passes. Brings us up to proclamation, special presentations. This evening I have a proclamation. Uh, recently we have gone to not reading most of our proclamations, just entering them into the record. I think today with what's going on in our world and in our country, it, 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 this is a good one for us to read and to take to heart. Whereas throughout the history America has faced trials and triumphs and the Americans have responded in prayer, seeking courage and comfort, inspiration and joy-filled celebration. Faith compels us to seek and cling to the light in times of darkness and spread light to those in need. And whereas from the first gathering of our founding fathers, elected officials have prayed and entreated those they serve and represent to join them in prayer, including the authors of our Declaration of Independence, wrote that they, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress, assembled, appealing to the supreme judge of the world, and carried on to present day in presidential proclamations, such as last year's invitation to join him in asking for God's continued guidance, mercy, protection, and whereas a national day of prayer has not only been a part of our heritage since it was declared by the First Continental Congress in 1775, but it is a, it is a public law established in the United States Congress in 1952 approved by a joint resolution and amended by Congress and President Reagan with Public Law 100-307 in 1988, affirming that it is essential for us as a nation to pray and direct the President of the United States to set aside and proclaim the first Thursday of May annually as the National Day of Prayer. And whereas in every state across America, the observance of National Day of Prayer will be held on Thursday, May 2nd, 2024, with the theme, Lift Up the World, Light Up the World, excuse me, Lift Up the Word, Light Up the World, based on the verse found in 2 Samuel 22, 29-31. For you are my lamp, O Lord, and may God lighten my darkness. This God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord proves true. He is a shield for all those who take refuge in him. And whereas the United Prayer is mobilized across America every first Thursday of May on the National Day of Prayer as neighbors come together to join their hearts and voices in reading sacred scriptures, attending services, to seek God for the city and county where we live, learn, work, worship, serve, and desire all to thrive. And whereas we express our faith and exercise our freedom in prayer, then unite our hearts and voices in personal prayer and public gatherings across America with fervent praise, repentance, love, and hum humble intercession for our neighbor and nation, holding fast to the promises throughout the Holy Scripture that the Lord hears and avails such as he answers the faith-filled people, prayers of his people. There, 
Now for I, James B. Bulkley, Mayor of Columbus, do hereby proclaim May 2nd, 2024 as National Day of Prayer in the City of Columbus. I would ask all of you to recognize that. There will be events taking place that whole day in Frankfurt Square. And as I said, it's something we certainly all can use. All right, we move on to public hearings. Item 7A, public hearing, application of the City of Columbus on behalf of Nels Johnson for a preliminary plat of Vitality Village Edition. This is north of 8th Street and 7th Avenue. The Planning Commission recommends approval. Is there anyone here this evening to speak? This is not a public hearing. This is not a public hearing. I'm sorry. Mr. Then Mayor, I recommend the preliminary plat of Vitality Village Edition be approved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the preliminary plat. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 7B, public hearing, application of the City of Columbus on behalf of Nels Johnson for a final plat of Vitality Village Edition. Again, north of 8th Street and 7th Avenue, the Planning Commission recommends approval. Is there anyone here to speak against this public hearing? I move the public hearing be closed. Yeah, we've got oh, I'm sorry. Yes, please come forward. Uh, Brett Kumpf, 3930 48th Avenue. Just a question, is Nels Johnson involved with the city in this other than the land? Or I see you because we're applying for him for the rezoning. We have a, um, we, Mr. Kumpf, we have a purchase agreement with Nels Johnson. Okay. And it, as part of that purchase agreement, there are several contingencies be met. And this is one of those contingencies. So as part of the agreement, he's the deal, assigned right. the okay. ability to, for the city to Other do this. Other than that, he wouldn't have involvement then no. after the purchase agreement. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Anyone else to speak against this public hearing? Ron. I move the public hearing be closed. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 7B1, resolution number R24-42, approving the final plat and development agreement. Mr. Mayor, I move resolution number R24-42 be adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution R24-42. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Is this, is this in the city? Have we? Uh, it is. It is. It has been. It is, and it has been. It is now. Well, it, it has been. It has been. It has been. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve. All those in favor, signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 7C, public hearing application of the City of Columbus on behalf of Nels Johnson to rezone property located north of 8th Street between 5th and 9th Avenue from R1, single family residential district to R2, two family residential district from R1, single family residential district to B2, general commercial district, and to amend the future land use map of the comprehensive plan. The Planning Commission recommends approval. Is there anyone here to speak against this public hearing? Mr. Mayor, move the public hearing be closed. Second. You didn't let me ask if anybody was here to speak for no. the public hearing. No, no. I, well, I, are we going to speak for it? <laughs> we have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 7C1, ordinance number 24-09, approving the rezoning. Mr. Mayor, I move the rules be suspended and ordinance number 24-09 be read by number only. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and read ordinance number 24-09 by number only. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. 
The motion passes. Item 7D, again, this is not a public hearing, the application of Quail Meadows LLC for preliminary plot of well, Quail Meadows. We still have to do the, the adopt. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, this yeah. is our, so our new procedure. Ordinance number 24-09. Mr. Mayor, move for the adoption of <laughs> ordinance number 24-09. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance number 24-09. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Here we go. Passed. It did. It's online. Motion passes. Item 7D. This is not a public hearing. Application of Quail Meadows LLC for preliminary plat of Quail Meadows Edition south of 1st Street between 10th and 14th Avenue. The Planning Commission recommends approval. This is not a public hearing, but people can speak to this item. I want to make that clear. Okay. Is there anyone here that would like to speak to this item? All right. All right. I don't want to take all the thunder, okay. Well, Mr. Mayor, move the preliminary plat for Quail Meadows edition be approved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the preliminary plat for Quail Meadows LLC. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 7E, public hearing, application of Quail Meadows LLC for a final plat of Quail Meadows Edition south of 1st Street between 10th and 14th Avenue. The Planning Commission recommends approval. Is there anyone here to speak against this public hearing? Is there anyone here to speak for this public hearing? Mr. Mayor, I move the public hearing be closed. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. <coughs> motion passes. Item 7E1. Public hearing determine whether Quail Meadows addition should be included within the corporate city limits. The Planning Commission recommends approval. Did we skip motion two on 70? But why is that there? That, there shouldn't be a motion two on that item. That's that's the resolution coming. Yeah, the, okay, yeah, yeah. You're right. Sorry. Yep. Okay, who has the resolution in front of them? No. Yeah. Oh, we're on one. Okay. Public hearing to determine quail addition included in corporate city limits. Anyone have a discuss? Anyone here to speak against this item? Clark, are you getting up to speak again? <laughs> we noticed you. I just. You know. <laughs> Anyone here to speak for this item? All right. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Any dis further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Again, that second re recommended motion there is not necessary because it's item 7E2. You see that, Janelle? That motion passed. So what are you two talking about? Now? Item 7E2. Resolution number R24-43, approving the final plat development agreement and bringing said addition into the corporate city limits. Yeah. Right. But she had a, it I, uh, I move the resolution number R42-43 be adopted. It's R24. R24, okay. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution number R24-43. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 7F, public hearing, application of Granville Custom Homes Incorporated <coughs> for final plat of Farmview 2nd Edition, 16th Avenue and 31st Street. The Planning Commission recommends approval. So this is approval of the plat. Correct. Correct? 
Yes. Okay. We, uh, uh, yeah, I, well, you need to ask well, for or against. No, any, no, well, no. Is a, I was going to. Anyone here to speak against this public hearing? It's not a public hearing. Mr. Mayor, can I ask you a question? Please do, but you have to come up, please. Absolutely. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Vicki Forsberg, and I reside at uh, 15. 32 31st Street here in Columbus and we were understanding that um, that Granville townhome Stephen Raymakers would be here tonight to present I'm not seeing that on the agenda but I think that we would still like to be heard and speak would that be an appropriate time to do that now it is the time you you are welcome to speak ma'am uh, okay and, and why it's not on the agenda he had sent an, an email to the city to pull the rezoning request uh, 4 30 this afternoon I see well <laughs> just for clarification just, okay. sake yeah, it is do. it is on the agenda the, the rezoning's on the agenda but the applicant did request for it to be removed so the final plat they're separate items the okay. platting is different from rezoning the platting is still on and that's the item okay. we're on right now that's creating the lots the okay. rezoning is what he requests to pull. The zoning is where we talk about use types. So that is not on the agenda tonight, but the final platting is. And that's what we're talking about right now. So if that gets added back onto your agenda, will we be notified so yes. that we Absolutely. can come back at a later time? He'll have to and do all of the notices over again for the zoning. Okay, because the original letter he sent out to the, to the townhome owners had nothing on there about rezoning. We had to go read a big sign to know that it was being rezoned. So we felt like we were kind of in the dark. So we just want to make sure that we're being heard at the appropriate time. Right. So as long as we'll be able to be heard in, at a later time, then as long as it's pulled for now, I think we're okay. Are we okay? Well, we want everybody to understand that the plotting and the rezoning are two sure. separate acts. So sure. I don't want anybody okay. leaving here thinking one over overshadows okay. the other they are steps that need to be taken okay and okay. this is just one of the steps and this one did get approved but it's in front of us rezoning okay. got pulled okay all right am Thank i you. saying that right okay. and just to clarify well, they have to go back to planning and zoning yes. yes so there'll be one more step involved in this. but the plating once the plating is is laid out that's what the plating will be well the plating lays out what lots can be <laughs> But planning right. and zoning determines what can be built yeah. so on if you those want, lots. If you, want, uh, if you want those rentals properties in there, that's going to happen tonight. No, no, it's no. Not. no. Oh, yeah. No. The, no. the platting is going to be done tonight. And he's laid out the platting however he wants to build it. That is true. But if he doesn't get a rezoning approval later, he cannot, he cannot build, build anything that's not the zoning today. And it's not R3 today, Ron, just for clarification. Yeah, please, John, if you're ready. John Swingman with Advanced Consulting Engineering Services, uh, 1363 26th Avenue here in Columbus. Yeah. I'm here to uh, represent Granville Homes on this matter. And I just want to kind of clarify what we're doing here is we want to move forward with the platting because we have a lot of steps in the design phase uh, that have to be done. And so we want to start to lay plans out and get plans sent to the city and to the reviewing agencies being DEE and Health and Human Services. If we need to make revisions to those plans later to um, accommodate any concessions or anything that were made, we can do that. But those review processes take 30 plus days down at those agencies. So we just want to get the ball rolling with getting our plans into them. And then if we have to, we'll do amendments or um, amendments to the plans to change them. So in part, this is just to kind of keep our process moving forward. Uh, and again, rezoning will happen at a later date or will be brought to the, the Planning Commission and Council if it needs to be. The, the property is now zoned what? It's presently R2. R2. And they came before planning and zoning and asking for R3. Okay, which is so what the, they are pulling is R3. All the property at this point, all the property that we're looking at is R2. Yes, yes. sir. Thank you. 
Yes, ma'am. My name is Jamie Camp Schneider. I live at 1704 31st Street. I guess I just want to still bring up, um, I still want to bring up safety concerns in the area. Um, and R3 was part of the concern. However, the vast addition of property that he has proposed, which I'm guessing is in this plat. I, I'm not real familiar with all of that terminology, but um, it's still a lot of homes, even if they are R2 homes. It looked like by the map that we received that the townhomes were not going to continue to be the way they are at this time that they're going to be smaller and that there's going to be more of them. And so I guess for me and several others in the neighborhood, it's very concerning as far as the traffic that this is going to present to our neighborhood. For those of us that have, um, well, it was presented to us as a 55 and older neighborhood and that is not what it has turned out to be because somehow the R3 for the apartments down the street that we currently have was never brought to our attention. Um, there were no signs up because we were the first ones living in the neighborhood. So it may have been done at the original time, um, but we were lied to about that because we were told it was going to be a 55 and over neighborhood, all townhouses. So. I guess if they're looking at building smaller town, smaller like one garage townhouses with smaller square foot, that's going to be more people in the neighborhood <coughs> than, and this is additional area that's all going to be coming out on 31st Street and 18th, which was never really built for that much traffic. And so when you look at this area, um, we have major concerns. I know not so much for me, but we have a large number of um, s single widowed or single over 55 um, ladies in the neighborhood and a lot of people with medical issues there. And so I feel that it's a big um, safety issue for the ambulances and the um, all of those to get in and once again, I don't know if you are if this is something you're voting on or not But to me it looks like if we're voting on the number of houses that can be opened up in this neighborhood We need to look at all of this traffic that is coming down 31st Street going on to 18th Avenue because I know the way it is right now there's already a lot of traffic in the mornings and um, after school and all of that and then you try to get emergency vehicles in there because we were told that this was a 55 and over neighborhood and now we've got apartments down the end of the street um, so the traffic has increased the children playing on the street because there's no green space for them to play in and playing on our intersections is a real concern to those of us living in the area um, like I started to say, and I know I need to keep this short, but um, for me, I moved, my mother was moving back from Arkansas, and we were told that this was going to be over and over, that it was going to be a quiet neighborhood without a lot of traffic. And because that was my first question, because I had lived down 31st Street, down on 4005, where they then opened up that area. And so my first question was, is this going to be, is there going to be a lot of traffic? And I was told over and over by Granville when they knew that um, what their original plan was back in 2018, we were told last week, by Stephen Raymakers. So if they knew this, then we were lied to and we're very fearful as a neighborhood of what's going to take place 
Um, and of course the rezoning was one thing, but I just think we need to look at what is actually being built there and how much traffic this is going to be adding for safety reasons. Ma'am, I, I understand your concerns and we take all of those into consideration, but please understand when we're looking at zoning, there are certain laws and rules that we follow. Mm -hmm. And it, if, if an area is zoned, and this happens to be zoned R, R2, mm -hmm. it, we don't have the ability to say something can't be there without the proper hearings to change it or do something different. That property has been an R2 from day one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to get into a tit for tat on who said what to whom. Mm -hmm. Please understand, we, we can't handle if you've been lied to or not lied to. I, right. I, I don't take away from you what you're saying. I'm just telling you how we have to proceed with what we try to evaluate. And obviously, every council person has their own feelings when it comes to that. But, but we can only base what we do on certain facts that we know in front of us. And, and I mean, I sat through the planning and zoning meeting, so I heard, mm -hmm. and, and, I've, and, I, and I know most of you. So I mean, certainly understand where you're coming from, but we've got to be careful in how we look at things from this point okay. also. And like I say, I'm, I am not, I do not understand all of everything that's going on like you do. I just wanted to bring up that even though I'm happy that the R3 isn't being presented tonight to move forward, um, I still feel like the area needs to be looked at for traffic and safety. I understand. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? <laughs> Please come forward. I have letters, Janelle. I won't throw them on the floor like I did for Kelly at Planning Commission. Uh, but my name is Dawson Brunswick, uh, 753 33rd Avenue, Columbus, Nebraska, Columbus Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, just wanted to, I wanted to come for all three, but uh, Member Hemer was pretty quick on the close and move on. But it, it's good to see the support from council. I know you guys have made workforce housing a priority, um, and what the city is doing with Vitality Village is fantastic. And, and what the, the three partners on Quail Meadows is doing as well is a, is a fantastic addition, um, as, as well as what um, Granville is proposing with their second edition of, of FarmView. Uh, the number I want to put in your guys' head tonight is 1,566. That is the number of open jobs that we have in Columbus as of this morning. And actually from Planning Commission last week, that number's up about 50. Um, completely understand what the neighbors are, are speaking about. You know, I live in Tallgrass, which isn't that far away from the casino, so I understand the the, the backyard components. Um, but, you know, with the three projects today, 435 units, give or take, um, that, that is truly transformational for Columbus. And I understand the, the 30 lots, and I think at one point, Granville has said roughly 40-ish to 45 units. Um, you know, those obviously are not geared towards workforce. Those are geared towards um, people um, with accommodations, retirees, those that are buying townhomes. Um, not a lot of people my age are buying townhomes. Um, just, just to, you know, I prefer have my own space. Um, but really just want to, to hone in on the need for all types of housing. And where, uh, yes, this isn't workforce housing, but does this open up 40 other doors in Columbus that people are able to move out of? And maybe they open up a three bed, two bath, or, or a five bed, three bath home that they've been living in for a number of years to move into one of these units. So um, we also, as a part of our outreach to our members, um, did reach out and ask them if, if they would take a look at the Planning Commission documents from last week and, you know, if they support it, to please let us know. Um, we end up having 35 members, um, and like I said, I'll give this list to Janelle, that range from companies as large as Baylor Manufacturing, Columbus Community Hospital, uh, to restaurants like Taco John's that are trying to find employees, to uh, Loop Power District, MMO Door Products. There's about 35 members that signed on to this in support of all three housing projects. Um, I know that, that the rezoning has been pulled, but... Um, we just ask that the council continue to support workforce housing efforts and um, help continue to fuel the growth that Columbus has been seeing. So thanks all for your time. Did you include also the, the, the fact that the uh, residents had some safety issues with traffic and um, did you include that also with your document or are you just padding your uh, statistics for more housing? 
So <laughs> what I did... In this particular project. Yeah, so what I did, Councilman Jablonski, is um, I sent out an email to all of our members, and it was an email I sent prior to Planning Commission, so prior to the uh, information that came up with the safety concerns. And it just had the, the Planning Commission documents, here's the layout, here's the estimated number of units, and we did that for, for Vitality Village, Quail Meadows, and uh, Farm View 2. Thanks all. Okay. Thank you, Dawson. Any comments, council members? I just want to be clear in regards to developments like this. There is, I'm newer to this, so I always refer to Rick, but there's always processes that the city has to go through to ensure the safety in regards to roadways and access. It's no different in regards to looking at any sort of development. And for this plat that has been taken care of, um, I did, I do appreciate the community members voicing their concerns because we need that feedback. Um, I also wanted to look into the safety concerns about police calls and so I did reach out to our Columbus Police Department and they provided that essentially from 20, the beginning of 2023 there's been four calls, essentially three, four health related issues and one was that an another incident. So essentially health related um, calls were determined there. So. Just making clarity in regards to as we're moving forward, I think there's a lot of information out there. And for myself, I want to look at the facts and make sure I'm getting the facts to make that appropriate um, choice. Very good. Okay. Any other comments, council members? Yeah, yeah one, one further comment. Uh, if the uh, addition was built out as R2, how many units <coughs> would be on the property. Mr. Wingman, would you know that or is that just a guess at this point? Um, can I say it's an educated guess? Well, we know you, but I mean, that's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we'll throw the educated. Out. Um, so basically the difference would be the two um, multi-unit uh, townhomes, the two lots, of, the big lots in there. And currently I believe there are 22 units planned there, 10 in one and 12 in the other. Yeah. And those would, I believe, be replaced with eight, four and four, and it might be only seven. It might be four and three townhouse units. So that would be, those 22 units would be replaced with either 14 or 16 uh, townhouse units um, if it, if it would, were to stay um, R2. And I just, like two other comments, if you don't mind, I know you didn't ask. Uh, just for Mr. Jablonski's information, there are two accesses to this. You can leave on 17th Avenue, and then that dumps out either on, I'm probably going to be wrong, but 30th or about 26th Street, 27th. Thank you, Rick. Uh, and then the other thing is, is uh, the talk about, there was a little bit of talk about more density and yes, there is more density from the original plat in 2018, but that is because the city's land development ordinances changed and so setbacks, the side lot setbacks can be smaller. So I believe there were four, either four or six additional doors that were added into the subdivision. So it is slightly more dense than 2018, but nominally compared to the number of housing units that are there. John, I saw a lot of eyebrows get raised when you said there's a second exit from this development. Can you clarify that, please? Um, 31st Street dumps out onto 18th Avenue, but there is also an exit south on 17th Avenue. Now, yes, it would. It still dumps out onto 18th because you have to go down to oh, sure. 30th you or 27th, go to, go to so it. it still dumps out on 18th. But I would like to remind the council that 18th Avenue is an arterial route, much like 33rd or 48th or 26th. And if you leave my place at 8.30 in the morning, you will sit for yeah. 20 minutes. That's what happens on those arterials at times. So, Okay. Thank you, John. Any other comment? Yes, sir. Anyway, uh, I will vote against uh, the plotting, and that is because of the... Uh, the rental property in the middle of the thing. I, I don't think it needs to be there. If you're going to do it, let's put it someplace else. Uh, so that's my vote. My vote will be no. 
May I clarify what he's talking about with the 17th Street dump? Okay, look, you, you just meant, but, but Councilman, we're not, we're not. I understand. I understand that. But okay. I'm, I'm, I'm voting against it because it's, the plan is there, and I don't want it to see okay. it happen. Okay. I, just so there's clarification on that regard. Yes, ma'am. Comment? 90% of the traffic is still going to go by all of our townhomes. I live right in front of the 17th Street, so there are about a half a block that is going to go off to the left if they turn onto 17th Street. Maybe it's a block. If it is, it's a very short block because we are the third townhouse in from 18th Street, and that our driveway is right at the intersection of the 17th Street, and that's where all of the little children are playing because they have no green space. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir, Mr. Young. I'm Jack Young. I live at uh, 1548 31st Street, um, and I live on the west side of me is 16th Avenue that's going to go into this new area. But do you have the plot? Do you have maps and stuff yeah. of what it is? Yeah. Um, can I? Can you, I, I can don't you have. Let us put it up on the screen, Jack. Okay. <laughs> she has it. She should have she it right it. here. I mean, we, you we, don't, we, we can put it up. I have another one I want to show you that she doesn't have. Two. Can she show those? Yeah, she can't show them, no. I, but she, you can. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. 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 This, this is what he showed us at our HOA meeting. We need you on the microphone doing both, oh, so okay. please. I'll give you that. Thank you. I wasn't going to talk tonight because I thought this was put on delay for period, but the point that she made about the traffic is very uh, real. And uh, when you, yeah, that's a, a good picture there. But uh, when you think about all of these homes, I, I call it high density homes. There's there's very little green in those areas of the new plot, and uh, this is. I guess you don't have this one either, do you? No. This is from, the, from your offices. This is showing you the, the con how condensed that is. Yeah. This is. This is phase one, this is phase two. You want to put that one up? I know we have it. Now, now the other thing is, we're talking about traffic, and we're talking about adding phase two. There's still a phase three coming. And so that's going to be even more traffic, and there's no way out to north end. So it's still going to come to out uh, 31st Street. Now, there is a chance they could turn down to the south, but that's, like she said, probably 90% of the traffic goes straight out. And the other thing, once they get out, any turning lane to the uh, high school for, or to the middle school uh, now, or even going further down, you don't, both ways, you don't have turning lanes. And so when school starts or school gets out, you have a congestion. Primarily, I can't think of what street that would be that you turn to go to the middle school off 18th Avenue, but, but there's a congestion there now, and it's going to get worse. And so as far as traffic goes, uh, I just wanted you to maybe look at the maps and see what they look like. Uh, and as far as this, this is the one that Granville would give to a, a, a realtor possibly to show. and. It doesn't, this is an old map that they're actually still using, but because they are starting to sell lots back there now. So anyway, yeah, I, I just wanted to that. add that about the traffic. And the other concern we have is parking, uh, because if they went with that zoning, that would be affected also. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other comments? Council members, public. <clears throat> Hi, 
I'm Denise Pandorf, um, 1546 31st Street. I wasn't going to talk either, but um, just so you understand what those maps are. So the first map was um, what we were given, or what some of us were given or asked for, um, to see what it was going to be like before we either built homes or um, um, moved there. And so what was going to be back there um, looked okay. Um, but um, the, what he's saying about the density, the density from what we were originally given in the new one, which, I mean, it, it's just a tremendously more, I can't say it's doubled, it's not doubled, but it's, it's <laughs> there's a big difference there of what originally we thought was going there versus what he wants to put there now. And maybe even this R2 is probably different than what the R2 original projection was. But I understand we do need we do need the housing. Um, but you know, I guess what we're trying we're after is so that we don't. I mean, because we're supposed. To, I mean, because what I was told is I was going to have a, um, a like two unit behind me. You know that was going to be more of the same of what I had, but right now they're proposing to have the what ten long unit. They call them townhouse. People are calling them different things. Some calling them townhouses. Um, uh, some are calling them apartments. Um, I guess I'm. I guess we agreed on calling it rentals because they're all connected, and so um, I'll. Uh, get along however they uh, whatever they uh, end up with because uh, I have to but but you know it's just not what we originally thought we were getting so I guess uh, but two I'm uh, worried about the safety and the traffic and and how are his emergency gonna get in there and that kind of thing so uh, and so thank you <laughs> absolutely I, I know a lot of comments have been made about traffic and and everybody's concerned about traffic in every neighborhood we have. And, and it comes up often on new developments. Um, recently, we had an addition uh, approved at Country Club Shores. Uh, traffic concerns were brought up. Uh, and, and what was pointed out is that the number of, of units there, which correspond to however many cars you want to talk about, is no greater than what we have in many other neighborhoods that the city has. Does that make it perfect? Does that make it great? No, but it, it does tell you that many other parts of the community have the same traffic or similar traffic. Um, you know, two that come to mind quite frequently, and I live in one of them, is Wagner Lake. We have one exit out of Wagner's Lake and over 300 doors. Christopher's Cove is another one. You know, there's 180 or 200 doors and one. 144. I'm a, I'm a, 144. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I am telling you that is something that, <coughs> that we do take into account. But we also have to look at what we have that works, and what you know what does work in other areas. There's no reason it doesn't work in this area. So I mean, traffic is something we consider. Tra traffic is important, but I'm just trying to point out how we have to look at it sometimes also. Um, other comments from council members? Yes, ma'am, please. I'm Debbie Cresha from 3164 18th Avenue, and I'm also concerned about the traffic, but one of the things when you mentioned the neighborhoods and everybody's neighborhood is busy, they don't have 18th Avenue that has semis, RVs, boats, slow-moving tractors, cars that occasionally go 50 miles an hour or motorcycles. And so that's one of my big concerns, trying to get out of a driveway when you don't judge right that somebody's coming fast or it's a big semi that's not going very slow either. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other comments? So we have a motion and a second Help me, where are we? This is the public hearing, so we just need, we need, a, we need a, All right, we need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. 
Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 7F1, resolution number R24-41, approving the final plat and development agreement. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move resolution number R24-41 be approved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution number R24-41, approving the final plat and development agreement. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. We have five ayes. Motion, um, motion passes. Item 7G, public hearing, application of Granville Custom Homes Incorporated to rezone property located on 16th Avenue and 31st Street from R2 to R3. Uh, multifamily residential district and amend the future land use plan due to a tight vote no recommendation was made from the Planning Commission since that time the applicant has requested that this item be removed from the agenda and again for clarification sake any rezoning that happens in the future they have to go back through the whole city process and send new notice to everyone within 300 feet of the property did you hear no where they no. What, what okay what what she said that if anybody if if they come back for rezoning this all has to come back with public notice uh public hearings everybody within 300 everybody within 300 feet would get notice you'd have your yellow signs you'd have the whole nine yards okay and it and it, and it goes back to planning and zoning to start there and move forward Okay. Did I miss something? No. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, no, we don't. No, <laughs> Mr. No, Mayor. We don't. no, we don't. I need a. I need, no, we don't. I need a, <laughs> Mr. Well, Mayor. We need a motion to remove this. Mr. Mayor, I'm. I move that this item be removed from the agenda. Second. second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to remove this item from the agenda. All those in favor, signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. This ought to be a slam dunk. <laughs> Motion pass. Item 7H, public hearing, text amendments to the Columbus Land Development Ordinance, including changes to the following. Procedures for special use permit, rezoning, administrative minor and major subdivisions, new and revised figures and tables, site development, supplemental use, Supplemental site development and site re sign regulations requirements, use types, required landscape depth, off street parking requirements, circulation system design, um, storm sewers, and stormwater management and improvement procedures. The proposed text amendments are on file in the city clerk's office. The planning commission recommends approval with the inclusion of a high density residential use under B2 zoning definition. This is a public hearing. This will come back in ordinance to be read three times. There is a red line version. So any questions or comments, we would be happy to answer. But again, this will come back two more times in the reading. Okay. This is a public hearing. Public hearing. Anyone here to address any of the comments, changes, or if you want to take time, it, it is redlined. You can yeah. look through it and review it. Bring your questions. Bring your que yeah, bring your questions to the, to the public if you have some. Okay. Anyone here to speak against or for or just come forward? Yeah, thank you. Red Conf. I was just, I knew nothing about this, so it's really... I didn't see it come out on the media or anything like that, you know, so I'm just curious what this all entails. I, it's almost 300 pages worth of stuff I see, so. But that's why we did the red line, Mr. Okay. Cuff. So yeah, you that can. helps a little bit. You can, well, it helps, it tells you everything that's changing, and it's not that many changes really Is overall. It more, um, procedural type stuff? It's or? more development and site 
site development. The um, state has been talking a lot about how local um, zoning regulation should not be limiting the development any more than the state okay. regulations do. So really, honestly, we're taking a lot of our regulations out on site development sorts okay. of things. And again, the land development ordinance is minimum standards. It's the bare minimum. So when we talk about um, lot sizes and things like that, that's totally up to the developer. What we set is minimums. So we're changing those a little bit. So the minimums will be changed yes. within the ordinance. Yes, and we'll be removing some um, it's redlined. We can go through it in depth if you want to come into the office. I'll be happy to go through it with you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Mr. Mayor, I'm mm -hmm. second. Well, that'd be good, too. Okay. <laughs> we don't need a vote, do we? All right, we have a motion and a second to close, close the public second. hearing. Oh, yeah, okay. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. It's going to go through three motion more passes. Times. Item 7H1, ordinance number 24-10, approving the text amendments to the Columbus Land Development Ordinance. Again, we're reading this three times. No motion is necessary. Item... Reports of city, Reports of offices. city offices. Item 9A, update on the Nebraska Department of Transportation 23rd Street Reconstruction Project. Our city engineer, Rick Bogus, will give an update. Okay, so um, on the 23rd Street and East 6th Avenue intersection, they're three quarters of the way done. Um, they have about three weeks left, and that's meeting the current, that's meeting that schedule they provided at the beginning. So we got three weeks of that intersection. Um, and that, that crossover, that'll all be taken away. That'll be, that'll be done on that segment. Um, as far as the current segment, the segment two, the one that's going on right now, they continue to put in the storm sewer and the water, um, get, and then they'll get ready to uh, follow up with the paving on the north side as soon as they can. So they're kind of, they will eventually be following the, the utility crews as the utility crews move to west. They'll pave from east to west, and that's why 18th Avenue will get open on that north side before the rest of them. So they are on schedule with that too. They, they did run into uh, some water lines that were in at their depths that everybody thought they were at 18th. Uh, it's minor, but, um, but they're just changing them too as they go. So grand scheme of things, it's early, but they're on schedule with everything. And hopefully in three weeks, we'll have that east part pretty much wrapped up. Is there any projection for 18th Avenue reopening? Uh, um, I'm gonna say it's probably four weeks-ish. Um, that's going to depend on, again, that water that they found there um, held them up a little bit longer than what they thought. Um, but I, I'd say about four weeks is my guess at this time. Thank you. All right. That brings up to new, new business. business. Item 13A, appointment of Cruz Bohr as a firefighter. <clears throat> Council members with permission the mayor would like to submit the name of Cruz Bohr for a conditional appointment to position of firefighter subject to successful completion of all pre-employment requirements. Per council rules the two-week waiting period is waived for an appointment of a paid firefighter. Mr. Bohr was certified for firefighter by the Civil Service Commission at the meeting held April 3, 2024. Cruz Bohr is currently a resident of Sioux Falls, South Dakota but is excited to relocate back to Nebraska. He is a graduate of Stanton High School in Stanton, Nebraska, and holds an associate's degree in paramedicine and associate's degree in personal training from Northeast Community College. Cruz, Cruz holds certifications in Firefighter 1 and 2, hazmat operation, and is a national registry paramedic. He has most recently been employed as a hardscape landscaper. Council members, uh, we'd entertain a motion for this appointment. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. It's
really do want to approve you, we just can't get it done here. <laughs> Motion passes. <laughs> Item 13B, appointment of Samuel. Did you want to invite him up? Well, he's going to invite both, both of them up okay. at, the, at, at, at the end. Item 13B, appointment of Samuel Hilger as a firefighter. Once again, council members, with your permission, the mayor wishes to submit the name of Sam Hilger for, for conditional appointment to the position of firefighter subject to successful completion of all pre-employment requirements. Per council rules, the two-week waiting period is waived for an appointment of a paid firefighter. Mr. Hilger was certified for firefighter by the Civil Service Commission at their meeting held April 3, 2024. Sam Hilger is currently a resident of David City, Nebraska. He is a graduate of Aquinas Central High School in David City and is currently taking classes at Southeast Community College for an associate's degree in health science. Sam is currently a member of the David City Volunteer Fire Department and is a national registered EMT. He has most recently been employed at his family farm, Hilger Alfalfa Incorporated. Council members, I'd entertain a motion for this appointment. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Fellas, would you like to come forward and say hello? I'm not jumping up and down. I see that. <laughs> Nobody's spreading the right. podium. Please well, just introduce yourself and I'm it... Cruz Bohr and I'm uh, definitely excited to get back into northeast Nebraska area. And... Glad to have you. Yes. Thank Thanks you. For the opportunity to join the fire department. Absolutely. Awesome. Good. Welcome. Um, thank you for the introduction. I'm Sam Hilger. Um, and I thank you for the appointment to the position. I can't wait to see what it brings, new opportunities, and to be able to serve Columbus. So thank you. Sam, I've got a couple of questions. You, you know, there's a few SCOTUS people up here. Would uh, you, be, Are you going to be okay that. with that? <laughs> huh? I'll leave it there. All right. All right. Congratulations. Yeah. Item 13C, appointment of Joe Marksmeyer to the Business Improvement Board to fill the unexpired term of Mary Neffler. Once again, council members, the mayor, with your permission, wishes to submit the following name for appointment to the Business Improvement Board at the April 15, 2024 City Council meeting for City Council rules. Mm -hmm. Joe Marksmeyer and his wife, Carmen, owned ink, screen printing, and apparel, as well as Polish Salon and Spa, both businesses located downtown at 2724 13th Street. They have owned and operated ink screen printing since 2016 and polished salon and spa since 2022. They have five children. Mr. Marks Meyer started ink screen printing and apparel in March of 2016. After purchasing their building downtown in December of 2019, they started renovation on the building and finished the salon portion in 2021. They completed the renovation on the rest of the building and moved the ink business to the location in 2022. The move to Columbus downtown has been a great for both of their businesses and they have seen great growth in ink since the move. Joe is excited to join the Business Improvement Board and to do all he can to help our downtown grow and thrive. Once again, council members, I'd entertain a motion for this appointment. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by aye, those opposed nay. Motion passes. Item 13D, quote from Applied Connective Technologies in the amount of $13,480.79 for 11 desktop computers. Mr. Mayor, I move the quote from Applied Connective Computers. Technologies for the computers. Yeah. <laughs> we have a motion. We have a motion and a second to approve the quote from Applied Connective Technologies. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, <coughs> signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 13E, quote from Dectronics Incorporated in the amount of $266,825 for a scoreboard at Memorial Stadium. 
Mr. Mayor, I move the quote for, from Dactronics Inc. Incorporated for scoreboard be accepted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the quote <coughs> from Dactronics and the amount of 20, 266825000 for the scoreboard at Memorial Stadium. Any discussion? I, uh, question, are we going to sell advertising like we did before, like was on there? Okay, yes. good. Yes. And just, I, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Just a quick question with the technology advancements. Like, do they give a timeline of how long this scored, scoreboard would last? <laughs> yeah. Yes, and the timeline's relatively the same. Around 10 years um, is the expected timeline for the technology. But that's why we also take the sponsorship dollars for those as well, is to help with that. That was, I, so basically 10 years ago, when did, did we get this one? Ben? 12 years 12 ago. Years. So 12 years ago on the existing one. So the public's up to speed. The, the city does sell advertising space on the scoreboard, mm -hmm. which basically has recouped all those dollars. It goes into the general parks fund. We don't just mm -hmm. cubby it over in a hole and wait for the scoreboard to go out of commission. But it does come into the city. So it is basically a self-sustaining mm -hmm. item within our park system. Yeah. And hopefully we can get additional years out of it by continuing to take care of them. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. <coughs> motion passes. Item 13F, proposal from Sirius <coughs> Computer Solutions, LLC, in the amount of $80,729.90 for Wi-Fi hardware and services at Bradshaw, Centennial, and Wilderness Parks, Quail Run, and Vanberg Golf Courses, Pro Shops, and 18th Avenue Pedestrian Bridge, the Aquatic Center, the Pawnee Plunge, and the Senior Center. This is CIP number 19-9. Mr. Mayor, move proposal for Cyrus Computer Solutions, LLC, for Wi-Fi hardware and service to be accepted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the proposal for computer services. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 13G, change current basic life and AD&D, &D, LTD, and voluntary life, AD&D, &D, insurance coverage to Mutual of Omaha, effective July 1st, 2024, and implement the worksite benefit options for employees to purchase, effective January 1st, 2025. Mayor, I move that the current basic life, A and D, LDD, and voluntary life, A, D, and D, insurance coverage be changed to Mutual of Omaha, Mutual of Omaha effective July 1, 2024, and worksite benefit options to be implemented effective January 1, 2025. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to do all that. <laughs> Any discussion? Seeing none. Up. Oh, go ahead, please. Please come forward. We don't want you to have to come to a meeting and then not get to come up and say something. Well, I trust everyone here. So, um, my name is Kip Kissinger with the Unico Group. Uh, we are the benefit consultant, uh, broker consultant for the city. And first and foremost, thank you for having me tonight. Um, I speak on behalf of the Health Insurance Committee. I'm just going to spend just a couple minutes with the summary that we've uh, brought as a motion here. Uh, we do have four motions, uh, of which Tara highlighted uh, one of the ones that are changed. There are two motions for keeping uh, relationships in place. First and foremost, the medical third-party administrator for the medical plans uh, is recommended to maintain that relationship with Oxiant as the third-party administrator um, after uh, analyzing the, the marketplace with six uh, potential carriers and four respondents. It was determined that Oxiant would, was the, uh, uh, the best case for the city. Uh, the second uh, carrier recommendation is for the dental and vision uh, principal with the dental and VSP with the voluntary vision. Those uh, carriers are currently in place and the recommendation is to maintain those relationships going forward. The third motion which Tara uh, summarized is the change to Mutual of Omaha from the uh, various uh, carriers uh, for purposes of cost savings as well as administrative ease um, to go into place or to go into effect um, on July 1st. Um, 
we analyze the marketplace with various carriers and approximately $5,000 savings per year. So on, on average, about a nine, nine, $9,500 savings over a two-year period um, for that relationship change. And then also the fourth motion on the worksite benefits to implement worksite benefits, which are completely voluntary uh, benefits based on employees uh, enrolling for those coverages. There will be no cost to the city for those uh, plans for, um, uh, excuse me, for hospital indemnity, critical illness, and accident coverage. And those plans would go into effect on January 1st of 2025 as well. Any comments or questions? Thank you. Thank Kevin. you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve. All those in favor, signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 13H, application of Columbus Realty Holdings, LLC, for preliminary plot of Super Saver Subdivision, west of 33rd Avenue, between 23rd and 25th Street. The Planning Commission recommends approval. <coughs> Mayor, I move the plan. preliminary plat of Super Saver Subdivision be approved. Second. Sorry. We have a motion and a second to approve the preliminary plat for Super Saver Subdivision. Any discussion? Yes, I, sir. I noticed that they're working over there now. Is this a, a problem? Are they uh, starting work before that's really kosher for them to start? Or I, I, or, 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 I would say it's only a problem if they do something that doesn't meet We've been very clear that they're allowed to do um, dirt work and foundations and anything they do beyond that is at their own risk. Very frankly, I think they're doing, they're putting the cart before the horse. And uh, I, I don't particularly like it. Thank well, you. I, I, I think we all hear what you're saying, Councilman, but I think if you talk to most developers, they will tell you the time window for getting certain things done is so small that many of them are willing to take the chance. And it's been spelled out that, that it, it's somewhat of a chance. And so it is up to, it's on their shoulders. Yep. Uh, any other comments? All right. All those in favor, signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 13I, application of Keys Real Estate LLC for preliminary plot of Harriman Acres, subdivision 48th Avenue, north of Howard Boulevard. The Planning Commission recommends approval. Well, we got a lot of aggressive, Anyone? A lot of aggressive <laughs> council members tonight, Anyone? don't we? <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I move the preliminary plot of Harriman Acres, subdivision be approved. <laughs> We have a motion and a second to approve the preliminary plat for uh, Harriman. Harriman, Acres. Harriman Acres. Any discussion? Harriman. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 13J, plan specifications and estimate of cost in the amount of $810,000 and authorization to advertise for bids for the Lost Creek Parkway traffic signals 2024. The plans and specs are on file in the engineering department. This is CIP number 23-22. Mr. Mayor, I move that the plans and specifications, estimate and cost of authorization to advertise for bids for the Lost Creek Parkway traffic signals 2024 be approved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve plan specifications and estimate of costs for the Lost Creek Parkway traffic signals. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 13K, plan specifications and estimate of cost in the amount of $3,300,000 and authorization to advertise for bids for the Vitality Village addition and community building south parking lot paving and infrastructure. The um, south parking lot is 14th Street and 25th Avenue. Just 
that's a little confusing. Um, plans and specification are on file in the engineering department. This is a variety of CIPs combined into one for bidding purposes, and that CIP number is 24-29, 23-46, 24-32, and 20-71. So each and every one of these items were part of our budgeting process and yes. you brought them together. Yes. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Any any comments? Any discussion? Yes, sir. Uh, could we break that down at least uh, uh, reasonably between there and here? Sure. Um, about $2 million is CIP 23-046 and... Um, I don't, they don't have the descriptions on them, but that would be the Vitality Village. Um, do you have these CIP numbers memorized, Rick? The CI, what's the half a million one? Uh, let me see here. I think, yeah, that, as you said, the, the two million is the, is the Vitality Village. Um, let's see, the half million, I think, was um, for uh, the trail portion of that work. So that would go towards Vitality Village. And the 200,000 was for the um, uh, parking lot across um, the parking lot south here. And then uh, it's just a portion of that $2 million. That's our um, annual uh, street budget. Annual street budget. Because there's like a um, crosswalk in the 14th Street. Right. Thank you. Any other comments? All right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. We didn't get a motion in a second. Well, I'm sorry. All right, then somebody please speak up. And authorization to advertise for bids for Vitality Village addition and parking lot improvements be approved. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the plans and specifications. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by aye. Those opposed, no. Motion passes. Item 13L, comments from the mayor and city council members. In compliance with the Open Meetings Act, no discussion may be held on the <coughs> Council members, any comments this evening? I have nothing myself this evening, so we'll move on to resolutions. Item 14A, resolution number R24-44, approving the professional services agreement with BVH Architecture in the amount of $350,000 for Memorial Stadium concept and schematic design phase 2024. This is CIP number 23-12. Mr. Mayor, I move that resolution number R24-44 be approved. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution number R24-44. Any discussion? I think a little um, explanation of what we're doing here for the public would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, one of, Beth, do you want me to speak to it? One of the uh, discretionary capital improvement projects that the um, you all, elected officials, um, chose to include in the budget for this year is the continuation of um, design and exploration of renovations at Memorial Stadium. Um, so this is the next step. BVH was selected um, as the architect, so this will take um, through the phase of concept and some schematic design for that project. Will there be any public input in this phase? Yes. Yes, there will be public input. We'll be seeking input from all of the entities that we regularly partner with that use the facility and then the community at large as well. Betsy, do you want to add anything else? No, that pretty much covered it. But yes, we'll make sure that the public's involved through the process. All right. Do we have a motion and a second? All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 14B, resolution number R24-45, approving the design build agreement with Beerman Contracting Incorporated in the amount of $20,000 for design phase services for the Centennial Park restroom and concession building. This is CIP number 24-30. Mr. Mayor, I move that resolution number R24-45 be adopted. Second. 
We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution number R24-45. Any discussion? This restroom is in the wrong location. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 14C, resolution number R24-46, approving the professional services agreement with Alfred Benish and company in an amount not to exceed $69,108 for the design and bidding phases of and geotechnical soils evaluation for lift station number 15. This is Westbrook lift station. CIP is 20-93. Mr. Mayor, I move resolution number R24-46 be adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to <coughs> adopt resolution R24-46. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 14D, resolution number R24-47, approving the amendment number one to the professional services agreement with Kirkham Michael and Associates Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $131,822.36 for construction and closeout phase services for the eight place T hangar project at the airport. This is CIP number 23-30. Mr. Mayor, I move resolution number R24-47 be adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution number R24-47. Any discussion? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, this is a second uh, engineering agreement with Kirk and Michael, is it not? Uh, first one, $140,000 for design services. Correct. And now another one for 135 or whatever for construction Oversight. and closeout services. Correct. Uh, has this amount been included in the grant application? Yes, the, this, these services are included in the overall project. Um, when I looked at the grant application the other day, it seemed to me that the grant application was the sum of the uh, first design services plus the estimated cost associated with construction. So you and don't think this is included? You don't think this contract is included? It, it didn't appear to me but that it was. is this included in that construction estimate, Rick? I, I would have to go check, but I think it is. I think the way they normally do that is they do design because they have a phase agreement. And next one, they lump in the observation along with the construction. Typically, that's the way it's done. I would we'll have to check, check that, but typically, that is the way that it is. Um, because if it's the other way, um, I've got $140,000 here, and then whatever the bid was, uh, not the bid, but the estimate was, totaled the grant application. At least the, that's the way I read it. And here we've got another $130,000 that's on over and above. And um, what we're saying is we think the hun this 131000 is included in that construction number, and we'll double-check that. It, please, please. Councilman, do. if it makes you more comfortable, we'll make sure we I don't sign this resolution until that approval has been given. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve resolution 2447. All those in favor, signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. <laughs> Motion passes. Item 14E, resolution number R24-48, awarding the bid to Bauer Underground Incorporated in the amount of $243,313.56 for the Fiber Network Project 2024. This is CIP number 19-9. Mr. Mayor, moves that resolution number R24-48 be adopted. Second. 
We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution number R24-48. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item 14F, resolution number R24-49, authorizing request to Nebraska Department of Economic Development for an extension of the completion date of the mm -hmm. to December 20th, 2024 for the Community Development Block Grant number 19-DTR-101 for the Downtown Revitalization Grant. Mr. Mayor, move for the adoption of resolution number R24-49. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution R24-49. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Those opposed, nay. Carried over. No, we got another meeting. Oh, right. Motion passes. Meeting adjourned. We do have a CDA meeting immediately following one item. Okay.